Hey there, welcome to Fringe FM Tech Talks. I'm your host, Matt Ward. I'm an entrepreneur, a futurist, and guy who's focused on exponential technologies, which is what we're talking about today. Voice, Alexa, and the future of computing. So let's, let's jump into an overview. So we all know Siri. Well, in 2011, Apple released Siri with their iPhone, and it was incredibly exciting. Suddenly you could get help figuring out where you needed to go. Hey Siri, how do I get to XYZ house? Hey Siri, can you do this Google search for me? Hey Siri, can you do this? Hey Siri, can you do that? It was really cool until suddenly it wasn't. Apple didn't really put much money into the into the voice interface. They didn't focus on AI and it's become increasingly obvious if you look at the differences between Amazon's Alexa and Google's Home and Google uh, Google Assistant. They're just so far away from Siri. 2017, that was the year of the, the smart speaker. We had so much in terms of hype going into all of these devices we can put into our home to improve our life experience, to have more music, to make things easier to handle. And that was really, really focused on in 2017. We had 10 million plus Amazon Alexas by 2017. Bezos says 10 millions which means we're probably looking 20, 30 million. And it's been going even faster since then. Google Home, they appear to be doing about a sixth of what the Alexas are doing. So that's that's still pretty successful, but it's not enormous by any means. But still, if you're looking at what, uh, 20, 30, 40, 50 million smart home speakers, that's pretty impressive, especially considering some of the privacy implications, which we'll talk about a little bit later. If this is your first one, connect on social media at It's Matt Ward. We're at Fringe FM Podcast on Facebook, and you can find us on YouTube at fringe.fm slash YouTube. But in terms of why voice-based technology is so interesting, it's a completely new interface. We went from having home computers, we maybe had a TV or a remote, and suddenly we jumped into the iPhone era. We had smartphones in our hand, we could communicate, we could access the internet. Well, voice is going to do very similar things. It's a new interface, which while starting with phones while starting with smart speakers will become increasingly interesting with robotics, smart home devices, automotive, etc. Just allowing you to be more productive and to do more things, especially while your hands are full. So speaking of why this is important, let's jump into some of the implications here. If you haven't checked out our live chat, you can add some questions there and we'll answer those at the end. Fringe.fm slash YouTube. Every Wednesday and Sunday at 12.30 p.m. EST, we go live and we answer your questions about the most interesting and exciting technologies. So let's talk about some of the implications of voice-based computing. I think the first and most obvious is just a reduced need or a reduced focus on traditional computing forms. So laptop phones, et cetera. We can see this already happening, but if I'm if I have a smart home, a smart speaker type device, I'm not going to go grab my phone and say, hey, hey, Google, who won the 2017, uh, who won the 2017 Super Bowl? I'm just going to say it. I'm not going to need to type that in. That takes away the need of a phone, and it really takes away a big domination when it comes to Google, Facebook, etc. when it comes to the advertising economy. I don't see a big space for voice-based advertising. If you're looking for something specific and you get an ad that's unrelated, and you're not able to get to the better information because you have Google or Alexa reading you out something you didn't want to hear, that's very invasive. People hate the Spotify ads. Now maybe maybe Google and uh, Alexa will have some type of monthly subscription where they can block out the ads and for five bucks a month, you'll just get access to the functionality. Now you have 300 million Americans, you get five bucks a month. That's a pretty decent amount. Subscribe, if you haven't hit that subscribe button, hit subscribe. That's a pretty decent amount, but uh, it's still, um, it's still pretty interesting. If I want to search for the history of transhumanism and I hear XYZ pill helps men get da 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 da. Um, here's a great way to boost your da 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 da. All of these advertisements I don't want to have. It's bad enough with Google looking at these ads and the search results, but if it's something that's being list, uh, read out loud and I can't skip through it, that's pretty frustrating. So what happens to Google's advertising business? I don't know. That's that's 90-ish, uh, 80-ish percent of Google's business right now is advertising, and they make a fortune doing it. It fuels their self-driving vehicles. It fuels everything that Google's doing, these crazy hot air balloons to deliver Wi-Fi around the world. What happens to that advertising business when suddenly Alexa's just going to show you whatever product Amazon's selling? Think about this. Hey, Alexa, we're running out of toilet paper. I really need a roll when I'm on the toilet. Well, A, they probably can't help you until it has arms, but B, 
if Amazon's ordering stuff for you, they're going to be A, ordering off of Amazon, and B, why would they order it from anyone else on Amazon besides Amazon? Amazon's creating an Amazon's Basics version of just about everything. If it's something boring that you need to have, Amazon's creating that, cutting out other sellers. Well, when you need something and you ask an Alexa for it, inevitably in the future, everything that Amazon sends you will be an Amazon Basics product because they make more money doing that. So what happens to your choice and uh, ability to, to access other products when suddenly it just kind of becomes ubiquitous? It's in the background. You don't even realize that it's happening. It's just happened. That'll be uh, that'll be pretty interesting, and it'll be pretty interesting as well. Thinking about the the Pareto principle. So, 20% of the products typically have 80% of the profits. 20% of the performers deliver 80% of the success. 20% of the people have 80% of the the dates. You can go on and on and on through the Pareto principle, but it becomes more interesting in a voice-based situation. Do we still have that 80/20, or do we get closer to a 99 and one, where? N- uh, 1% gets 99% of the action because who's going to want to listen to two, three, four different options for what they want to figure out? They're not. They're just going to want the first best option. And if that first best option is there, they're going to take that. If you haven't subscribed to the podcast, fringe.fm slash YouTube. Subscribe on YouTube. Subscribe on iTunes, fringe.fm slash iTunes to make sure you never miss a thing. Every Monday and Friday, I have world leaders in the fields of AI, quantum computing, space, genetics, human longevity, you name it. If it's something that's transforming our futures, we're having the world leaders in those fields. So fringe.fm slash iTunes, be sure to subscribe. Looking at some of the implications of voice tech. I think it's going to be very interesting to see what people are willing to give up for functionality and convenience. If you look today, people are willing to give up just about anything to have access to cat photos, Facebook friends, etc. And I think we're only going to get further along. But just the amount of data and privacy that goes into having an Alexa, Google Home in your house, what happens when suddenly you have not one of these in your house, but one in every room? Maybe these have video cameras on to be able to detect other types of things. What happens if Alexa catches you having sex, an affair, murder? What happens? What about with go- government and law? Are they able to just requisition this this data coming out of your home, that your private place where you live? I don't think most of us would want that. Do we move towards a minority report type world where suddenly information is everywhere and it's completely used to control us? I think that's certainly certainly a possibility. It's a scary possibility, but I certainly don't think it's an impossible possibility. What happens then? That's one of the one of the questions I have, and it's one that I don't see a lot of people talking about. And even the ones that are talking about it kind of talk about it as if it's something that's maybe for the future and not happening right now. I think voice is going to be very valuable in go-to situations. So if I'm in the kitchen cooking and I need some extra ingredients, Lex is going to order it for me. If I'm walking, if I'm on the toilet and I need to order something, Alexa is going to do it for me. If I'm driving in my car before it's autonomous, well, Alexa is going to order it for me. We're in a situation where if you're busy doing stuff, if you're in a not hands-free type situation and your hands are very busy, well, voice becomes a very obvious computing interface. Now, out in public, if you're walking around saying, hey, Google, set up a meeting for me on Wednesday at 3.30 p.m. with this guy, or Hey Alexa, can you order me the? Uh, can you order me that thing we weren't supposed to talk about, but I really need? Your people aren't going to want to talk about things in public out loud as if they're crazy all the time. This is something where voice will be something in your home, in your car, on the way to work, things of that nature, where you're in a situation where you don't mind talking out loud and not appearing crazy. If you're if you're out in public, you'll appear very crazy. Now, as we get more into a situation, which we've talked about a bit in the past, of the future of robotics, and as we start to have more robots in our homes and around us in society, I think it's very obvious there will be voice-based computing and voice-based interfaces there. Hey, Alexa, can you do this? Hey, uh, R2-D2, I need, a, I need a foot massage. I mean, it's pretty obvious. I don't want to go and grab my phone and type in foot massage. I want to be able to communicate because it's the fastest and easiest way to do it. And I think with robots, that'll be pretty obvious. One thing I really hope we avoid is another another set of smartphone wars, another set of PC wars. We we've had this so much in the past, and it's been it's been really, really frustrating of you've got Google, you've got Android, you've got Apple, you've got iOS. And then you have these companies that don't want to work together no matter what because they're kind of diametrically opposed. And in essence, it only hurts the consumer. The experiences aren't as good. There might be great apps in the iOS store that aren't on Android. There might be great functionality with Google Maps that Apple doesn't want to use. There's all of this that happens that people avoid or aren't able to access because companies are holding things on for themselves. They're trying to create a their own little ecosystem. I think this is even a stronger example if you look at Facebook, Google, etc. Facebook tries to build their own little ecosystem, keeping everyone else out. Twitter does the same thing. And that only hurts consumers. And I think 
I really hope we're able to build some type of situation that has interactivity between different types of home devices. So if I have a smart refrigerator, a smart toilet, Alexa speakers, and a TV that can talk to me, I better not need to use four different freaking apps to communicate with them. I better be able to use the same type of voice-based commands for all of them. Otherwise, it's just going to be a terrible experience. Let's talk about some of the pros of voice-based computing. Well, seamless, seamless, easy, efficient life is certainly one of them. If I want to do something and I'm busy, my hands aren't free, hey, Amazon, turn on the lights. Alexa, we need more chicken and eggs. Can you go shopping? Write down these lists. All of these things that are super easy to build processes for that you don't have to do and that you're able to do without really thinking about, that's super, super convenient for consumers. It's going to create a massive market as well for both the hardware and the services or the software side of things. There's a lot that you can do that won't necessarily be run by Amazon or Google. You can think about services on top of these where maybe Alexa is ordering an Uber or you have Google that is... Um, Google that's doing stuff with, with your, your data, et cetera, to send to your doctor. There can be some interesting intersections here where you have businesses that are built on top of these platforms. Again, if you're building on top of platforms, keep in mind you're playing with fire. If, if you want to look a little bit more into that, just search for playing with fire platforms and you should find an article there that I wrote about how you can find yourself in a lot of trouble playing on other people's playgrounds. Um, in terms of fairer access, I think one thing that we forget about in terms of society is what it's like to be disabled. Most of us have never been in that type of situation. If I turned the camera down right now and you saw I was in a wheelchair, suddenly you'd feel bad for me. But you would have never thought about what my life was like. I'm thankfully not disabled, but I know plenty of people that are. And the ability to create uh, situation circumstances where they're able to do things they otherwise were not able to maybe it makes their life easier not having to go out to the store shopping maybe your life is easier because you're in a wheelchair and you're not able to reach the lights in a in a room where you're going for a conference etc there's all of these things where if we're able to have voice-based voice-based uh computing and voice-based control we have a situation where everyone has a has a lot fairer access there's a there's some really interesting stuff happening here. I think this is probably going to be a winner-take-all or winner-take-most market, unfortunately, due to the network effects. So what are network effects? Network effects are the things where you have Facebook and I have Facebook, so Facebook's more valuable. And my brother has Facebook. I don't have a brother. Oh, wow, Facebook's even more valuable. And his friends have Facebook and their friends have Facebook. And every single additional person adds value. Well, with a network effect, I think we'll see similar things here in the, in the, the smart voice space because as you have more people on the platform, you have more data. So it, being able to take on Alexa or take on Google right now in the, in the voice-based computing space would be very challenging because they already have so much data from all of their existing customers. But that's only going to become larger and larger and larger as there's more devices. It becomes a flywheel where their systems become so much more efficient that no one else can catch up. In addition to that, there's so much cost that goes into not only creating the devices, the hardware side of things, so there's only so many players that can compete in that space, but then the software side of things of optimizing all of that data. AI is not just having lots of data. It's having lots of data and cleaning it up and improving the conditions and testing it and continuously doing that. And there's a couple companies in the world. The, the three biggest and best at those are Amazon, Google, and Facebook on the Western side of things. Baidu is pretty good in, in uh, China as well. And there's a lot of other companies. But most of them are the ones that we would traditionally consider the tech giants. And they have so much of an advantage just from a, a first mover perspective and the experience that they have in the past. It'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Hopefully... It's not a monopoly type market, but in terms of an investment opportunity, there will be some massive, massive players that are able to ride these waves of change. There, every wave of change creates massive companies and disruption, and it'll be interesting to see which companies get disrupted from voice. So cons, let's talk about cons. Number one, data and privacy. Jesus, can you imagine having the Amazon, Facebook, Google in your home? I would not want that. I, I mean, it's bad enough knowing that they have all of my data through my search history, through my Facebook page, through everything I've been doing online. That's bad enough. And they're using that to sell advertising. Well, I use ad blockers, et cetera, obviously. But in terms of just giving away your information, privacy, et cetera, the amount of power and control, it's probably enough to elect a president. <laughs> hint, hint. But, uh, but in terms of actually having information from people in their homes and seeing how they interact how they act not only in a this is my public expression of me on my facebook page but actually how they're acting what they're doing 
who they're cheating with, what they're eating, what their habits are, when they wake up, all of this information that you probably wouldn't want big companies to have, there will be more and more of that information getting out there. And it will create more and more of an opportunity for a monopoly. We talked about Amazon's potential monopoly of being both the access point, the product, and the platform for commerce going forward. I think that's one that will become more and more more and more powerful, especially considering the, the Whole Foods acquisition. Now they own a grocery store, so everything you want to buy and eat as well, they can send that to you, and you can just be talking to Alexa like, hey, wouldn't it be great if we had chicken chicken, uh, chicken con queso uh, tonight? And Amazon will order everything for you, and it'll get there within an hour or two, and suddenly that's what you have for dinner. I think we're entering that type of world. I don't see Amazon skipping something that's such an obvious opportunity, especially when they're so set up to take advantage of this. And pretty much no other company could touch this, and Amazon has everything perfectly lined up. I'm worried about the pricing power that they'll have and the ability for them to keep other consumer, to keep other businesses out of the loop. Without these businesses, you run into a monopoly type situation, prices go up, consumers aren't happy, or at the very least, you have a lack of innovation. What about cybersecurity? Between phones getting hacked, Equifax giving away your data, Uber giving away your data, every company giving away your data, getting hacked with very little repercussions, what happens when there's more devices in our home and that device has even more sensitive information about us that is able to see you in the bedroom, in the shower, etc. All of this stuff that you would not want other people happening, having, well, the more devices you have, the larger the attack network, so to speak, or the attack uh, area that can, I mean, there's a lot of hacking coming out of Eastern Europe, Russia, China, etc. But it, it's happening pretty much across the world because if there's a way to make money doing something, even if it is a little dirty, there's always people that will do it. Well, what happens when suddenly there's way more ways to get into you, your home, to grab your credit card information? Maybe you accidentally say it to your spouse or you've got cameras in your phone and your home and you're looking and typing in information on your computer, you're writing it down and passing it to someone. All this information, information is power. What happens when other people are able to access your information you never wanted them to have? Especially with devices, there's not a lot of repercussions, so to speak, from hacks and flaws. We see pretty much the consumers getting screwed and companies getting away with murder. That will be a lot scarier when that murder is happening in your home. And then there's manipulation. When I know everything about you, I know your habits, your tendencies, etc., you get into an even more... Uh, wolf and sheep type situation where you can control people. We've seen this with recent elections. We'll see it going forward as well. And that will only become more problematic as we have more data about individuals. If you're enjoying this so far, make sure you subscribe to the podcast. You can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, Android, Spotify, and of course, YouTube, you name it. Just go into your favorite podcasting platform and search for Fringe FM. You can subscribe. You'll also find our uh, interviews that we do with tech leaders. So imagine TED level types of folks, but we're talking for an hour, an hour and a half, two hours. So we can talk about all the tangential and converging technologies related to these experts fields. It's a lot of fun. I really recommend checking it out. And if you enjoy this, hit that subscribe button on YouTube so that you don't miss a thing. Every Wednesday and Sunday at 12.30 p.m. EST, we're going live and having another one of these tech talks. We're talking about the exponential technologies affecting all of us. But now it's time to jump into some predictions. People love predictions, and they're always afraid to make them, which is why I like to make predictions. My predictions won't be right. Predictions are never right. But they make you think about the future in ways that you wouldn't have otherwise and will make you take actions that typically are better for you and for the world around you. I think for voice, specifically, this will be the next big computing paradigm, especially in the home, in the car, etc. It's still kind of awkward to talk to yourself on a device or while you're walking around, but I think within five to 10 years, it'll be something where the vast majority of the, the short form compute, so to speak, that you're doing in your home, in your car, etc., will be handled by voice. You don't want to have to be searching for small little things on your phone and going to find your phone to be able to do that. You probably don't want to keep it in your, in your pocket because it's not great uh, if you're a guy for your, your uh, yeah. Anyways, it's not great to have in your pocket all the time, so you'll probably want to be talking to your devices, so to speak. I think within 10 years, 50% of the, the population, at least in first world countries, will have some type of specific voice-based compute device in their home. Whether this is an Alexa, Google Home, something else entirely, you'll have something in your home that you're able to and, and frequently interacting with, probably on a daily or uh, more than daily basis, to get information, get the weather, etc. If you woke up, 
a device told you what the weather was. You act, asked what the weather was going to be like later. Hey, did anyone post anything interesting? Oh, by the way, can you check my email? All of these things are things that your phone could be doing, but they would probably be better for some type of specifically specifically designed design device, and I think that's where we're headed. I think within 10 years, all refrigerators are going to come with some type of voice-based platform built in. And I think the, the reason for this will be like with the printer industry. Selling a printer, you don't make any money. Selling a 3D printer, you don't make any money. It's in selling the ink, selling the cartridges. Well, I think if you're able to sell a refrigerator and then allow people to order things directly from that refrigerator, whether that's from Amazon and Whole Foods or from some other system, that can be a great affiliate commission or business type model where you're giving people a refrigerator making a little bit of money but then when they need more milk hey i need more milk and suddenly it's getting delivered they're making a little bit of commission your life's a lot easier i think that's a pretty obvious one and i think within 10 years that'll be that'll be pretty standard look for amazon to enter this space because amazon wants to control all e-commerce and they're in the best position to do this so when you see amazon selling selling um alexa refrigerators i told you so i think voice is going to help amazon win grocery we talked about this a bit before in the past but the, the Whole Foods acquisition was enormous, but it was also enormous for Amazon in terms of the implications. With the, we, we can't really get into the reason why grocery didn't work for Amazon initially on this episode, but it basically came down to the chicken and the egg situation of groceries go bad if you don't sell them too quickly. So if you don't have enough demand to meet the supply, then when you have too much supply, all the supply spoils and you have to throw it all away. By buying Whole Foods, they bought a existing supply demand orchestra. Um, infrastructure that was functional and balanced. So they're able to slightly increase demand and slightly increase supply and scale things up quickly as opposed to increasing supply or, inc or increasing demand and just having them not be balanced out. So I think Amazon with voice, with Alexa technology in your homes will be the, the driving force that helps Amazon win the, the grocery game. You don't want to have to go to the store to buy your stuff. You want to say, hey, Alexa, this is what I'm having for dinner, lunch, etc. It has your recipes, it knows what you need, and it orders it all for you. It makes life so much easier, faster, simpler, etc. I think that's definitely where we're headed. If this has been interesting for you, leave comments, questions, etc. in the in the YouTube description. Go to fringe.fm slash YouTube. You can find this video live right now, guys. And let's see if there's anything in there. There's no questions right now, but I will keep this going for a little bit. And if you guys have anything that you want to add, add those questions and I will address those at the very end of the live stream. It looks like we're not getting anything. I want to thank you guys here again we've got our youtube q a puts your questions in there for this or any future episodes and we'll address those if you're not here on the live stream we'll address those in the comments section as well i hope this has been fun interesting entertaining for you and if it's been valuable make sure to hit that subscribe button it means a ton to us when you subscribe to the podcast when you subscribe to these videos so if you're on youtube hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss a thing we go live every wednesday and sunday at 12 30 p.m est and if this is something that you enjoy, subscribe here, subscribe on the podcast, and we will make sure you never miss a thing. There's a really, really exciting future happening. It's happening for all of us, and it's happening right now. This is the type of stuff we talk about on Fringe FM. If that's you, if that's what you enjoy learning about, listening to, and thinking about, how you can make the world bigger, better, more abundant, hit that subscribe button, and yeah, add some comments in the show notes. We like to see what you guys are thinking so that we can try to make this even better for you. I'm your host, Matt Ward, signing off. I want to thank you guys. Have an awesome day, and cheers.